Hey everybody, this is Rafi Zerb, and I'm really excited to share something with you. This video is on foundation SAS mix-ins. So foundation has a ton of SAS mix-ins available to create certain styles that you don't need to use CSS classes for, or there are no CSS classes for. So what this means is you can use your own custom classes and create things like a CSS triangle or a hamburger icon and then customize it the way that you want it to look. Uh, you could create background triangles, you could do clear fix, you could do auto width. So I'm actually going to demo some of these for you right now and show you how to use them. So first let's take a look at the CSS triangle. So if I copy this code right here and we'll hop over to our example and take a look at it. Okay, so I have two callouts here that I intend to use as uh, quote containers. So they're going to have quotes in them and then they're going to have a little uh, triangle pointer down to an avatar. So let's create that triangle pointer on these callouts. So if I hop over to my code, you can see what we have here. So we have just a basic set of uh, two columns with callouts inside. So we're going to attach these to the callout class. So let's hop over to our SAS. So over here we have our callout and there is an after uh, pseudo element here that we are targeting this with. Of course, if you are using a, a pseudo element, you need to have the content tag. It could either be empty or have content in it. Um, we're going to leave that empty and we're going to paste in the code that we got from the docs. It says at include CSS triangle. Now there's a couple variables that we could set here and uh, change the styles of this CSS triangle with. So if we hop back over to the docs, we could take a look at what that is. So right here, it gives you uh, some different options. So triangle size is the first one. So that is the width of the triangle. Now it is a uh, triangle that is equal width on all sides, isosceles triangle. So let's go ahead and set that width. The next one is triangle color. So we're going to want to set a color to that triangle and then the triangle direction. So we can either be up, down, right or left. All right. Hopping back over to our code. Let's just go ahead and change some of these things. So we're going to go ahead and make this uh, 10 pixels wide, let's say, or actually let's make it really big. We'll make it one rem. And then for the triangle color, let's use one of our SAS variables. Um, we'll use the secondary color, which is a little bit darker version of the gray that's on the background of those callouts right now. And then triangle direction, we'll make that down. So if we save that, hop back over to our code, it would already have refreshed. And now you can see those triangles are created right inside that component. Now we didn't do any uh, positioning on these yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and position them. So let's do position absolute and we'll set that to bottom. Now the bottom should be the same distance as the height of the triangle, so we'll make that one rem also but in the negative direction. So it's going to go down below the edge of the callout. And then we're going to uh, do left, let's say 5%. So save that, hop back over to our code. Now we can see that our CSS triangles are positioned correctly and in, in the right place and the right size. So that's how you can use a SAS mixin, uh, which is the CSS triangle mix in to create a CSS triangle. Next, we're going to show you how to make the hamburger icon. Okay, so in order to create a custom hamburger icon, we can use the hamburger mix in that's built into foundation. So 
Let's hop over to an example where we have one on our page. So we're going back to this page where now we have this title bar up here with a couple hamburger icons. So when you hover over the hamburger icon, you can see that the color changes a little bit. Uh, you can see that it has some default spacing between the bars. And uh, if we want this to look a little bit different, we want it to be wider, shorter, smaller, um, have more spacing between the bars, have less bars, whatever we want it to do, we can use the hamburger mix-in uh, to create that. So let's hop back over to the docs and change this up. So we can copy this uh, hamburger mix-in. And you can see if you look down below that there are some default values listed here in this table. So the color variable, uh, by default it's set to black, and then uh, dark gray for the hover color, and some of these other settings here. So we're gonna go ahead and use this mix-in uh, with a custom class. So if we hop over to our code, you can see that right now the class of menu icon is creating that uh, menu or that hamburger, the default one. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to a different class. So we don't wanna use the default styles and we wanna use our own class name. So let's just call it a hamburger icon. So I'm gonna save that. If we hop back over to our page example, you see that the hamburger icon disappeared because we're not using the default foundation class anymore. And that's okay because we're going to use a mix-in instead. So I'm gonna hop over to my SCSS file uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add the hamburger icon. So I already have the class here. I'm going to add the mix-in. Okay, so now we can set our variables. So we have our add include hamburger and it's looking for a color. So this is the color of the bars. We're gonna go ahead and use the white color variable if we want those bars to be white. So it's on a dark background, so white works. And then color hover, um, we could make this like dark gray so it actually changes to that color when we hover over it. Otherwise, if we don't wanna show any change while hovering over it, um, we can just set that to white and then it won't change. Uh, and then we can set the width. So I don't remember what the default width is. Let's hop back over to this page here and it'll tell us that the default width is 20 pixels and the default height is 16 pixels. All right, great. So let's hop back over and set those. So I want it to be a little bit wider. So let's go with 24 pixels and let's go with a height of 12 pixels. I don't know, I want something a little bit wider and shorter. So let's try that out. The weight is the thickness of each bar. So I think the default was two pixels. So we can leave that at two pixels for now. We can play with it later if we want to. And then the bars. So the bars is how many bars there are. Um, so we, let's do a two bar hamburger icon, kind of like the Apple one. So let's save that. And then we'll hop back over to our example and take a look at our new hamburger icon. So you can see it here. We have a new hamburger icon. It's two bars, it's really wide. Um, you know, the bars are kind of thick. So let's say I want to, you know, bring those down to one pixels. Um, and actually I decided, okay, I want three bars here. So we could do that. And then now it is a three bar hamburger icon, really thin um, and wide. So. You can see the difference between the default one here. You can see that thickness and, and uh, the width versus this wider one. So this is how you can use the hamburger mix-in in foundation to create your custom hamburger icon. Another handy uh, mix-in is if you are using floats, uh, you can actually clear fix uh, some of your parent sections so that way the floats clear properly. Now. Uh, you can do this um, with Flexbox a lot cleaner. It doesn't require um, clearing floats, but if you are still using floats, um, like for older browser compatibility, 
then definitely um, you can use this mixin and that way you don't have to have classes inside your code. So let's take a look at an example where we might need that. So right now I have these two things at the bottom of this um, quote card uh, or call out and one is on the left and one is on the right. And you can see that it's kind of overlapping the container. The container doesn't really know where it's supposed to be in relation to these two things. Um, and that is one of the pitfalls of using floats. So if we look at the markup, we have this uh, wrapper called callout footer and then uh, float left and float right classes. These uh, float left and float right classes are built into foundation if you're using the standard float version and they'll shift things left and right. But it is using a float and uh, float has the problem of needing to be cleared. So we need to clear at the parent level. Now there is a uh, clear fix class that you can add to here, but now your code starts to get a little bit dirty. Um, if you want to keep it a little bit cleaner, you can just use the mix in. So we're going to use this call out footer uh, cl a class and we're gonna attach a clear fix to this. So let's take a look at that, call out footer. And now we're going to uh, grab that mix in. So it's at include clear fix, pretty simple. So we'll add that in there and then we'll see the result. So you can see that now this is cleared properly and we don't have that weird overlapping issue that the floats created. Now again, you can use this without uh, using floats. You can use Flexbox instead, which we have a different lesson on, but otherwise this is a, a mix-in to help you with clearing floats. Okay, so another mix-in that you're gonna find helpful is the invisible element mix-in. So, we can actually hide something visually, but then it's still accessible to like a keyboard or if somebody is using like an assistive device, like a screen reader. Uh, so this is a good option. One example of using this mixin would be for, let's say these labels here. So these labels are important for accessibility. They describe what the input is and it's a place where you can give more information. Uh, so. There's a couple different ways to do this, but if we just wanted to visually hide these labels but still have them accessible to a screen reader, we can actually use this mix-in. So let's take a look at the code. If we had a login form here, uh, so there's a form with a class of login form, and then there's some uh, labels that are wrapping these inputs. So labels are here, we want to visually hide them. So let's go ahead and set that up. So I have my login form class here. Now if I target the labels themselves, I can add this mix in. If I do that, let's see what happens. Oh wow, our inputs are gone. Okay. so. There's one thing that we need to do to use this properly. So there's two ways to use labels with inputs and, and have them tied to each other. One way is to wrap the input with the label. The other way is to use the for attribute and that's actually going to be handy here. So we're gonna say for and we're going to say email. And then here we're going to put in an ID of email. So as long as those two match, now we can actually attribute this label to this input. And we'll do the same thing here. So we're going to do the for attributes and we're going to say password. And then here we're going to add an ID of password. All right, so now if we hop back over to our example, you can see that it looks correct now. Uh, so the uh, inputs or the labels are visually hidden. They're still accessible to a screen reader or, or when operated, um, navigated uh, to with a keyboard, but they are visually hidden. 
So that is a good mix-in to use for that. And again, that is the Element Invisible mix-in in Foundation. And just a note on that last mix-in, the Element Invisible Off mix-in will actually reverse that. So if you want a specific uh, label to show, but you want all the other ones inside of a selector to be hidden, um, you can use this mix-in to reverse it for that one. So that's available as well. Now we're going to look at some of the ones that uh, we use the most here at Zurb. Um, they're very handy. Uh, so we have some vertical and horizontal uh, centering mix-ins that you'll find really useful. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we have a hero section that we've added to this page and it's this blue area. And there's also a text box that is supposed to sit in the middle of this. Now, we want to be able to keep this in the middle no matter what screen size we're on. If we shrink the page down, if we make it bigger, um, we want it to stay in the middle. So there's a couple mix-ins that you can use to achieve this. So let's take a look at those. So first of all, we have a vertical centering mix-in. And we also have a horizontal centering mix-in. So let's take a look at the vertical centering mix-in. And we'll jump into our code. So we have our CSS here. So we have our hero. And this is what has the background color and the height. Uh, and then the hero content itself. So if we want to align the hero content um, vertically in the center, Okay, so we are add this vertical center mix-in and we can save this and see that this doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work correctly is because we have not set a position to the background uh, or that hero. So the hero needs to be position relative. Okay. So the reason for that is that this vertical centering mixin uses the uh, position absolute top 50% transform translate negative 50% uh, trick. This really saves you a lot of remembering and a lot of code, so you can just do it real fast. So now if I save that and hop over, you can see that it is vertically centered perfectly in this container. Cool. Okay, so now I can horizontally center it as well. So instead of vertical, I can do horizontal center. And this is using the same trick, but now it's doing it in the X direction. So you can see now it's horizontally centered. Now, instead of doing horizontal center and vertical center mix-ins both together, uh, which wouldn't work so great, we actually have an absolute sensor mix-in as well. So let's get rid of this one, we don't need it. And we'll use the absolute center. So if we hop back over to our example, now we are perfectly vertically and horizontally centered, no matter what size the screen is on. So that is the foundation uh, helper mix-ins. There's a lot of mixins here that uh, you can use to just quickly speed up your, your coding and really get the results that you're looking for. Uh, so definitely use these mixins. They're very customizable and they're here to really help you. So if you want to learn more about Foundations mixins, we teach about that in our Advanced Foundation class. So I'll put the link below. You can check that out. And thanks for watching.